Hello, Mr. Zed here, and welcome to my second video. I'm not quite as nervous as I was the first time I tried this, but still pretty nervous, but that's okay. The stress just pushes, uh, pushes me and pushes people to perform at their best. I guess that's why competition is good and why it's important to just do your best when you write exams or do some kind of um, you know, presentation. It's important to push yourself to those limits at, at times. So this is um, a time that I am putting my best foot forward. I, uh, I suppose you're wondering if I just walk around my my place, my studio, apartment, and just wear a suit every day. No, I do not. In fact, I, well, I wear a suit once a week, but I have quite the collection. I love going to thrift stores and looking through all of the, the cool old suits, and a lot of them are uh, treasures, and I can get them at just a fraction of the cost of their original price so I have quite the collection of suits and ties especially ties oh wow and I just uh, I admired teachers that would wear suits as they taught however <clears throat> I I tend to well, be very active running around the classroom. Maybe it's that I'm uh, just more high strung than the average average bear, but I sweat like a horse as well. So wearing a suit in the classroom just did, never did make sense for me. Uh, so this is an opportunity to, for me to be the kind of teacher that I would like to be sometimes, one that would wear a suit. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the story that I'm going to read today. It is um, a story called, Can Anybody Hear Me? by Jessica Miserve. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name exactly. Miserve, Miserve, Jessica Miserve. Now it seems she is the illustrator of this story as well because uh, nobody else is identified as the illustrator. Let's just read the back of the story and find out what this is about. <clears throat> Jack is very quiet. His busy, rumbustious family is very noisy. Rumbustious. That's a tough word I rarely see. Must mean something like rambunctious. His busy, ram rumbustious family is very noisy. Sometimes it seems as if no one really hears what he has to say. Or is it that they are just not listening properly? Well, I guess we'll find out. Let's turn this screen down. Oh my. Try this again. Oh, sometimes I wish I had another real arm. Okay, how did I do this last time? Let's see. I guess I'll flip the pages like this. It's going to be tough to read upside down, but I'll try. Okay, can anybody hear me? Jessica, me serve. Um, wow, this looks like me when I was a little kid. We didn't have pigs in our farm, but uh, I would often spend time out in the barn just sitting on the bales, and I had more cats around me. Um, no chickens either, unfortunately, but I would always have a lot of cats, and uh, that was that was where I would go when I was feeling sad or angry, especially sad. It seemed like I was sad quite often when I was a kid. So I would spend a lot of time just uh, hanging out with my cats and not, not 
talking with them all the time, but just laughing at them and <laughs> and uh, just being comforted by the way they would play and uh, I guess laughing with them and laughing or laughing at them <laughs> and uh, just like the story we read last time called the tree, uh, the forward that was written um, as an introduction mentioned climbing trees when when one is feeling sad or or alone or angry and needing time alone so trees can offer a place uh, of solitude and rest and peace just like the the barn and the hay bales and I guess it's important to have those kinds of places somewhere you feel safe and comfortable okay so Let's get started. This is Jack. He is very quiet. This is Jack's family. They are very noisy. In fact, they are so noisy that no one seems to hear Jack. And they look pretty busy. Let's do one page at a time. Jack said to Ma, I'm going to the mountain today. Ma said, one or two pancakes. Jack said, one please. Ma gave him two. Jack said to Granny and Gramps, I'm going to walk to the top of the mountain today. Granny said, I'm going to knit you a nice new sweater. What color, red or blue? Jack said, blue, please. Granny said, red is a very good choice. Gramps said, I'm going to write a song about red. Jack said to Pa, I'm going to the very top of the mountain today. Pa said, are you going fishing in the creek? Jack said, no, I'm going to the top of the mountain. Pa said, catch some big ones. Oh my. Jack said to Junebug and Jim Bob, do you want to come to the top of the mountain? Junebug said to Jim Bob, Jack wants to play hide and seek. Jack said, no, I want to go to the mountain. Jim Bob said, count to 50. Jack, count to 50, Jack. We'll hide. I wonder if anybody heard me say I'm going to the mountain, thought Jack. I hope someone did. He set off on his own with just his best friend Chester for company. Past the barn, across the pastures, and over the whooshing, burbling waterfall. Up, up, up the mountainside. until he reached the top of the mountain. The mountaintop was still and quiet. Jack took a deep breath, filled his lungs and shouted with all his might, Can anybody hear me? Jack barely heard his voice fill the silence for a second before it disappeared into the vast sky around him.
Jack's side. Oh, I wish someone could hear me. Jack uh, cuddled Chester and whispered, You can hear me, can't you? Yes, said Chester, looking straight at him. I have always heard you. Jack blinked with surprise, then smiled and said, Do you want to play? Chester smiled back and said, Yes. Together they slid down the snowy peak of the mountain and fell giggling into a heap of snow. At the bottom of the slope they found a young wolf cub all alone. Do you think he's lost? asked Jack. Yes, said Chester. We should call for his mother. Maybe if we howl together, she'll hear us. Jack was doubtful. No one ever seems to hear me. I can, said Chester. Give it a go. Arr So together they howled like wolves. Soon over the hill, a much larger wolf bounded towards them. There, said Chester, I knew you could do it. Together, they walked down the mountainside towards home. Suddenly, a bear appeared on the path, towering above them. Jack and Chester froze. Chester's voice quivered. If you look big and growl back, you can scare him away, he said. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do. Jack's legs were shaking, but he took a deep breath, filled his lungs, and growled his biggest growl. The bear fled into the woods. Chester smiled. You were very fierce and loud. Jack smiled back. Thank you. Night fell. Chester, Jack said, I think we're lost. If you can call a mother wolf and scare away a bear, you can yell for help, said Chester. Jack picked up Chester. He took a deep breath, filling his lungs, and shouted out, Can anybody hear me? Only an owl hooted in response. I think I'm still not noisy enough for my family to hear me, said Jack. But then Jack saw lanterns bobbing in the distance. He heard the voices of Ma and Pa. Jack, where are you? Jack, can you hear us? Jack called with all his might. I'm over here. I'm over here. The voices of his family drew closer. Jack smiled. They can hear me. Chester, just like you. Pa cried, we were so worried. No one knew where you were. Chester knew where I was, Jack said. Chester? Pa laughed. Come on, it's time for supper, said Ma. Chester winked at Jack.
Back at the ranch, Jack's family all talked at once, asking where he had been. Jack took a deep breath, filled his lungs, and with his biggest voice he shouted, Quiet, please! His family became as quiet as mice. Then Jack began his story, and this time they all heard every word. Wow. Well, he learned a lot on his journey. And he thankfully was able to call for help. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I guess the moral of the story is keep saying what you need to say. And eventually it will be heard. There's always someone listening. All right. Hope everybody has a great day or a good night, whatever time it is for you. See you next time.